Showing up to the field and realizing it's windy as a hurricane can make the trip feel wasted, but not if you are familiar with ways to fly in the wind. Let's start with what even causes wind and weather in the first place, the uneven heating of the Earth's surface. Part of that uneven heating is what leads to wind, as well as turbulence. Whoa, whoa. Turbulence is a byproduct of different drafts and currents of air, also known as wind. So to begin, we're going to dig into the types of turbulence and wind shear that apply to RC. There are many forms of turbulence, such as clear air, temperature inversions, thunderstorms, etc. But most of these only apply up at higher altitudes than what most RC folks will be flying at unless you're a daredevil FPV nut. The types of turbulence that most apply to RC are thermal turbulence, mechanical turbulence, and wind shear. Let's start with thermal turbulence. Thermal turbulence is characterized by sections of rising warm air caused by the warming of the Earth's surface or by colder air traveling over warmer ground. As Newton said, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So where there's rising air, there's also going to be falling air, but not necessarily at a one-to-one -one trade off. Either way, when your plane flies between the rising and falling air sections, there's your bumps. In RC, thermals do make for fun with flying gliders, and we're hoping to get back into that soon with some upcoming aircraft we're going to get that will reopen glider towing for us. Stay tuned. Now for the fun stuff, mechanical turbulence. Essentially, as air that's blowing over the surface meets mechanical interruptions, such as trees, buildings, etc., it gets interrupted from its regularly scheduled programming of steady-state air into a wildly irregular pattern that can tend to lead to some wild reactions from your aircraft. Mechanical turbulence is also a form of wind shear. Let's dig into that a bit more. What even is wind shear? Well, by definition, it's a sudden change in wind speed or direction. Wind shear can happen at any altitude. Violent wind shear can be fatal for full-scale airplanes and can leave our RC foam or balsa birds in a pile of scrap if not respected. In full-scale jets, we have a preset wind shear escape maneuver and our fancy flight directors help us to escape when combined with maximum thrust. The same performance can be asked of RC planes. Recently, we brought our beater Freewing F-35 to the field on a very windy day to demonstrate what wind shear looks like at its worst. Holy crap, dude! As you just saw, on approach, I experienced what full scope pilots would refer to as a loss on short final. In other words, a loss of headwind, arguably combined with a downdraft form of wind shear that decided to ghost me rather than text me back. The result was nearly annihilating the airplane and asking maximum performance out of the wing in the aircraft to escape it. So, how do you deal with wind shear? Right. Step one, don't be dummies like us and purposely fly in nasty conditions. We abused our plane to show you that you shouldn't do the same. Step two, if you do end up in wind shear involuntarily, add max thrust and fly the plane, hopefully not into the ground. Unfortunately, I met the beautiful stunning woman named Terra Firma with the F-35 when I rounded out and had a sudden loss of performance flying a foot up. I didn't react quickly enough and, well, rest in pieces. Stay tuned though, we've got more planned with the F-35 in the future. Now that we know what negative effects wind can lead to turbulence-wise, we should probably dig into how to even read the wind in the first place. Ever gone shopping for clothes and asked someone for a pair of wind socks? We hope not, but they are a handy tool for reading the wind. The best way I was ever explained on how to read a windsock was to simply catch the tail. If you see the tail of the windsock sticking out in any direction, you want to ensure that you fly towards it in a way that would allow you to reach out and grab the tail end of the windsock. Most windsocks are calibrated in the full scale world, which means that they also can tell you how strong the wind is based on how far out they're sticking. 90 degrees generally equates to 15 knots or greater of wind. This isn't always the case with RC windsocks, but you can still gauge the conditions based on the same idea. Wind socks aren't the only tool available to us to read the wind, and some folks even use stuff like household yard wind decorations shaped like airplanes. Whatever you do opt to use, your wind reading device is only as useful to you as your ability to read it. After taking a look at the wind sock, let's go ahead and discuss taking off and landing on a breezy day. Takeoffs are pretty straightforward. We've only got a couple brief tips. One, if you are flying a super light airplane, you may be required to take off directly into the wind if it's strong enough. This could mean a takeoff across the runway to prevent it from flipping over, even with corrective inputs. Just be sure not to take off towards people. Two, since you'll have a nice stiff headwind, adding flaps for takeoff to reduce your ground roll arguably isn't totally necessary anymore, but take this technique or leave it. Let's jump to landings. In full-scale airliners, when landing with a high wind and especially when there's a gust factor, we always adjust our approach speed to come in a little bit quicker in case of stuff like sudden gusts and wind shear. In smaller full-scale GA planes like Cessnas, the same idea applies, and some folks even will opt to use less or no flaps as well, so the plane has less drag in case max performance is needed out of the wing on the approach. The same philosophy can be translated into RC. 
However, full-scale GA planes don't have the gobs of excess thrust that we do, so don't worry so much about having flaps down or up. Mainly, just plan to approach a little faster, and to bring your power to idle a little earlier in the round out to flare, to avoid floating from having your excess energy on final as part of your free insurance policy. How about landings with the wind? Tailwind landing should be avoided at all costs unless the scenario specifically dictates it. For example, some full-scale airports, such as this one we used to fly out of when I towed gliders in Washington State, only can be approached from one direction and departed in the opposite direction due to obstacles. The biggest issue with tailwinds is the excessive ground speed you'll have, which generally leads to runway overruns. Don't forget, too, that most planes act as weather vanes, especially lighter RC ones. So on the landing rollout, you could potentially massively ground loop as the plane tries to point itself into the wind. Speaking of weather vanes, after we land, the wind still has a large effect on our airplanes, so it's important to know how to correct for it as we taxi in. Method 1. Simply don't taxi. If it's windy enough, we suggest landing into the wind, coming to a stop, and walking to your plane to grab it. We've definitely experienced a rollover from trying to wrestle the wind even with proper corrective inputs with our lower wing loading models. Method 2. Use corrective inputs with your ailerons and elevator. Let's dive right into it. Headwind Taxi Inputs with a headwind, keep your elevator up and ailerons neutral. With a headwind combined with a crosswind, keep the elevator up and roll the ailerons into the wind. For example, if the wind is blowing from left to right, roll the ailerons into the wind or to the left. Tailwind Taxi Inputs With a direct tailwind and no crosswind, in full scale it is recommended to keep your elevator fully down, but since your RC models are so light and incredibly controllable, full down elevator could translate to a prop strike. This one varies from plane to plane. With a tailwind and a crosswind, use the technique we just discussed with the elevator, but roll the ailerons with the wind. For example, if you have a quartering tailwind blowing from right to left, push your stick forward and left. Dive with the wind. So why do ailerons help us on the ground with a crosswind? Adverse yaw. Check out our rudder video for a full explanation on this, but ailerons do induce yaw, which in a crosswind taxi could be the difference between maintaining centerline and ending up in a ground loop. Stay tuned for two full videos on how to take off and land in crosswinds with both trikes and tailwheels. Let's wrap things up with a brief rundown of some additional pointers and facts on windy flying. Wing loading. As with full scale, the more weight your wing is having to support per square unit, the better it will handle the bumps. The lighter the wing loading, the more susceptible it is to wind. It's for this reason that we suggest picking your aircraft wisely if you're going to fly in a windy day. Don't bring a microplane, as it could get blown away, especially if you fly it high up where the winds tend to get stronger. Pilot Induced Oscillations, or PIO. PIO is easy to get into when dealing with sudden gains and losses of wind and bumps in flight. Use of things like Expo to help prevent overcontrolling can help, and you can try and wait before making a correction. Remember, a plane will fly itself without your input. You're just helping guide it in the right direction. Don't helicopter parent your airplane. Setting Personal Limitations. Never be afraid to say no to flying if the conditions don't meet your liking. As full-scale folks say, we'd rather be on the ground wishing we were in the air than in the air wishing we were on the ground. Gyros. These are still a polarizing topic in our hobby, but they do work great with the wind. The whole purpose of most gyros, such as the Aura 8 from Flex Innovations or AS3X from Horizon Hobby, is to make the plane track a nice clean line without being affected by external forces such as thermals and rotors. Flying a plane on a windy day with a gyro will help you be able to better focus on enjoying flying the plane and not worrying so much about an uncommanded roll 5 feet off the deck on final. Finally, you can always have fun doing stuff like we do on windy days. You can spend time learning how to truly fly your plane at the edge of its envelope in wind shear, do one wheel landings and crosswinds using a side slip, or even try flying backwards. What are your favorite reasons to fly, or not to fly, on a windy day? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button or even the like button. Happy landings and bounce one on for us. We'll see you next time with a new upload.